What's going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another live stream. And uh, listen, happy... Um, what day is it, actually? Happy happy Friday, people. I was wondering if it's Thursday or Friday. Happy Friday, people. Uh, it's Friday, then. It's Saturday, Sunday. Hey, no football for Arsenal this weekend, though. International break settings. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's a few decent games to watch over the weekend. you got France against Germany. England against Brazil, one or two other games as well. So uh, big up to everyone tuned in and um, make sure you hit the like button. As I said, from Monday, it will be a case of building up to that Manchester City game next weekend. They're going to do previews and so on and so forth. And um, of course, uh, we'll do an, a watch along tomorrow probably for... Um, England against Brazil, uh, although not many Arsenal players will be involved. Kendrick's coming after J. Cole, wrong move. There's all sorts going off. I think Future's album dropped last night as well. There's all sorts going off, man, with uh, with music. Yeah, man, Jamaica lost to America last night, one nil up, but they bottled it. Leon Bailey's doing crazy interviews, you know, cussing the whole of the Jamaica Football Federation. I can't blame him. He spoke a lot of truth, though. Uh, big up... Um, Big up Johnny Bell, Biggie C, um, M said exams finally ended, can finally watch your streams. Big up to you, bro, the exams went well. Uh, big up Kev, Nimbo, everyone locked in, make sure you hit the like button. Big up everyone on Twitch as well. It is the calm before the storm because by next weekend, I could be sitting here going, I think we can win the league, or I'm sitting here going, it's same old Arsenal, depending on what happens against City, you know, but... That game is huge. I can't wait for that game. i got to be honest, man. Uh, Bailey was speaking truths. So yeah, 100%, man. They uh, they definitely need to improve the setup over there in Jamaica, man. I mean, just to give a bit of context, Paul Hall, who was the manager previously, I'm good friends with him. I've known him for a long time. And, you know, players not being paid, paying for their own flights, not getting direct flights from England to Jamaica, making you fly and do stopovers just to save money. I mean, you're never going to be a serious nation if that's how you operate. But listen, big up to everyone locked in. Big up the whole C unit. Hit the like button. What do you make of the media about the New England top colours? I don't really understand. They're going mad because the bat, the England badge, they've changed the colour rather than the, the stripe being red. I think they've made it red and blue. It's something to do with the training kit from years ago. I, I don't know. To be honest, I've never bought an England kit. So, um, Saka promoted his source, then dashed out. Listen, we'll speak about it. We will speak about it. That is for sure. Um, like I say, big up to all of you locked in and uh, appreciate you tuning in on this Friday. A few things to talk about. Um, let's start with Takahiro Tomiyasu. Um he signed a new contract with the football club. It was announced a day or two ago. Um, but he signed a new deal. And um, I personally think it's good news. I've seen the reaction. And you know me, I'm not one to um, you know hold back my true feelings when it comes to Arsenal. Personally, I think it's a good decision. I understand where the pushback is coming from. Some people are saying, why should he get a new contract with his injury record? And I do understand that. I do, and I'm very much a person that thinks if you're injury prone, we should look to move you on kind of thing. Um, but the reason I look at this a little bit different is because I don't believe he needs to be a starting eleven player. Um, every week, so you know, I think a lot of the, I think a lot of the injury problems is when we're trying to play him every week. I think if you're using him in rotation, then it works out a lot better. I think that's the situation we're going to be aiming for with Tommy Asu. I don't think Tommy Asu is going to be starting every week. Now, you can end up in a situation where you've got four or five injury-prone players, and sometimes they're some of your best players. Even though I'm very harsh and I say if they're injury-prone, move them on, sometimes you have to kind of wait. The reason I back this deal, if this was just a general four-year contract, five-year contract, which usually um, we would do, then I would be like, has he really done enough to get a new four-year deal? What I actually like about this contract is... He signed a two-year contract with a one-year um, 
possibility of extending for another year. So he's only signed till 2026, which I think is all right. Because if you then keep him till the end of next season and he's still struggling with injuries, year left on his deal, you get rid of him next summer. No problem. If his injury record calms down and we use him in rotation and he does really well, let's face it, he is a very good squad player. And I don't like to call players that because I think sometimes, you know, a player should always aim to be a starting 11 player. If Tommy's at right back, I'm not concerned. If he's at left back, I'm not concerned. If he's on the bench, it's brilliant cover. And I don't think he's a player that's going to make a whole heap of noise if he's not playing. So the way they've structured the deal, I don't mind. I don't mind it. Left back, right back, centre back, good on the ball. Wouldn't start him every week then I think the injury record calms down. If you have another injury hit season next season, he would only have a year left on his contract next summer, and then I think you, I think the club would sell him. So I think it's quite a smart deal from Edu. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Chris said only a two-year extension for a solid squad player, even if he's injury prone. It's okay, Tommy is worth the risk. Ayodeji said, big up, big C. His daughter turns two today. She woke up this morning, went to the fridge, bring out watermelon and start saying ball. Played it until it broke and did this. Ooh, hey, big up your daughter on her birthday, man. Big up. Uh, Tommy's not the answer, says Joseph. Uh, I get flashbacks to that pass back to De Bruyne. I hear you on that. That's uh, a bit of a nightmare. Timber can play all positions. He can, but he's been out for eight months. going to be harsh. Um, might be harsh, says Aiden, but Trossard is in the same boat. Yeah, he is. He is. He, he, he will never start every week at Arsenal. It's not a bad thing. It's good to have good players on the bench. Look at Jota at Liverpool. Scores nearly every time he plays, but he, he never gets that that start. It's just one of them, you know? It's just one of them. Um, apart from Timber, he's our next best at left-back. Somebody just said there, I missed a comment. They said he's been more injury-prone than Tierney. The problem you got with Tierney is... Tierney is, he's been at the club longer. Remember, Tierney wasn't bought by Arteta, he was bought by Emery. Tommy Asu was bought by Mikel Arteta. That makes a big difference straight away. Second of all, Tierney, we've even heard it from himself, he doesn't like inverting. Whether we agree with that or not, that's how the manager wants the fullbacks to play. Tommy Asu can invert. He can play right back, he can play left back, he can play centre back. Tierney can't do that. So... I get it, and I, and, I, and I have complained about the injury-prone situation. I think I would give him one more year, see how it plays out. If he's injured again a lot of next season, you get rid of him next summer. So I actually think this is quite smart business. Kev's on the men, master of disaster. He is good. Um, obviously, I don't think he's making content yet, but he is on the mend. He's at home. I have been speaking to him. So, yeah, big up to everyone asking about Kev. Let's say, how does Luis Suarez time in England and Barca when he was at his prime comp? Listen, Luis Suarez, like I said, on a personal level, I think he's a bit of a scumbag for obvious reasons. As a footballer, you're talking about one of the best strikers we've watched in the last 10 years. It's as simple as that. You know, that last year or two at Liverpool and the next two or three years at Barcelona, arguably the best striker on the planet, in my opinion. Um if I'm being real. Big up Stephen who said, happy Friday, people. Um, Beer said, Jota's the best finisher at Liverpool but plays 20 games a season. And and you you simply have players like that. Will Tord was at the Euros with France. He was on the bench. Carney was scoring hat-tricks for Arsenal. He was on the bench. Edu was playing for Brazil. He couldn't get in the Arsenal team. When we... When we have good players on the bench, it means the team's improving. Keros, did you see Balassi's move? Yeah, he's gone to Brazil. Big him up. I did message him. Fitz, Fitz is coming for me here. And I don't mind explaining it, Fitz. He said, you go on about the best av best ability is availability. Then stand up for a constantly injured player we can't rely on. Doesn't make sense. Because I think you can have different circumstances. I think circumstances have to play a role in that judgment. If I'm looking at you as a first team player, and I need you to start every week, then I have to be more harsh with my judgment of you, right? I have to be more harsh. He played 21 games last year when he was more of a squad player. He's played 13 so far this year. Let's say he plays another five. You're looking at 18 games for the season. I view him as a 15 to 20 game a season player for Arsenal next season. 
if you use him in that way, I think he's. I think you can get good use out of him. If you're trying to play him at right back every week and you want 38 league games plus cups, it ain't happening. It's not happening. So I think we we got to look at the circumstances. He's had a couple of injury prone years, you know. But I think we can give him one more year. We didn't play. We didn't pay a lot for him. He's very versatile. He's very reliable. He's only in his mid twenties. When I say reliable, I mean in terms of his quality when he plays. I think it's worth giving him this contract. I think it's a good contract um, because there's an escape clause. And I always say with Arsenal, Arsenal need an escape clause with injury prone players. So that's why I back it. Big up Yasin, big up to you, birthday shout outs, hope you're well. Um, so yeah, listen, I understand your point though, Fitz. HR said our players faking injuries to avoid international games. Well, um, I hope Arsenal are doing dark arts, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, listen, I understand some of you will tune in and go, well, he's always talking about get rid of injury prone players. I think under this situation you can give him one more season if he's injury prone again next year and you're trying to use him as a squad player then you get rid of him you get rid of him next summer so i, I actually applaud the club for this um anyway tommy asu new contract two years fit said when you're going for big trophies every player is needed when called upon he simply cannot be relied upon enough and listen i get you i do get you but he played 21 games last year I would be looking at him to play 20 games a season for Arsenal. And I think that's that's all right. I think you can work with that. Salmon said, should be selling, moving on to a better signing like a big club. He's declining, sell him, screw the nice guy. <laughs> oh, some of you don't agree with me. Uh, Jerome said, I disagree, injured way too much. It's also why I hope we don't sign Isak. Um, and uh, Kay Bauer said, Tommy is a squad player. He'll be better in this role. Well, we'll see. It will it will play its uh, it will play itself out. I suppose will be the uh, the way we'll see. And uh, I could I could be sitting here in a year going, we got it all wrong. The guy's been injured most of the season. If he does well, fits. Hey, listen, go easy on me, people. It's Friday. It's Friday. I think it's I think it's a decent bit of business. I really do. I would give him one more year, but I, I understand the pushback. People saying injury prone, get rid of him. E Ross said, "Big up C unit. Uh, where, where, when in hell are we getting rid of Elne? He said, "Drick Laconga Tavares and Axel Foley." I mean, I'm hoping it's a, a clear out sale in the summer, bro. You know, every one of them names you mentioned needs selling or Elne and Cedric giving away. Um, we need a we need a big clear out this summer. I would expect eight or nine players to leave at least. Um. So we'll see. Big up, Jack. Hi, Jack, in the comments. Hope you're well. Uh, it's Friday then. It's Saturday, Sunday. Franklin said, Tommy isn't a starter. 20 games a season is more than he'd start if Timber plays. And that's what I'm saying. But we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll touch back on that next season and see whether I was wrong or not. I'll keep the receipts, though, Fitz, because Fitz is uh, throwing that Lennox Lewis jab at me there. Um, Arsenal played a behind-closed-door fixture. To be fair, this won't um, this won't help my argument with uh, giving him a new contract. Um, Arsenal were beaten 4-0 by QPR. But what I will say is don't panic. Don't panic. It was only an under-21 game. It was only an under-21 game. But obviously, Partey and Tomiyasu took part. Now, as a first-team player, it's never a good thing if you're involved in a game, you know, and you get beat 4-0. Um, listen, no Arsenal first-team players played apart from these two. Thomas Partey played for 60 minutes and uh, Tomiyasu played for 45 minutes. It was an under-21 slash under-23 game. Obviously, even some of our best under-21 players were not there because they were on international duty. But still, a bit embarrassing. A bit embarrassing, you know. QPR um, had a young team out as well and they smoked us with two first-team players in there. Listen, I suppose the biggest thing is... Uh, man said, ain't no way. I suppose the biggest thing is Part A got 60 minutes, Tomeyasu got 45 minutes. I don't know how they played... Um, some people might know more. People saying, sack him. We lost 4-0 to QPR. Get him out. Now, nah, listen. Um, I've said before, to Thomas Partey, his, uh, his wife gave birth 
to a, a daughter, I believe. And uh, since he's come back into the team, I thought Thomas Partey had given birth because the brother looks like he needs to go on maternity leave himself the way the guy, our Rusty, has been playing. But hopefully, couple behind closed doors games, bit of fitness, and he's okay. Uh, and Tommy Asu got 45 minutes. So we'll see. We'll see, uh, you know, when they come back. But it's interesting because... And I'm, I don't want to read too much into this. I'm not particularly bothered that we lost 4-0. I would have rather... I said, brother, uh, uh. <laughs> Hey, you lot imagine her. I'm not particularly bothered. The one thing I will say... One thing I will say... We constantly hear about Hale End, right? And of course, at the moment, Hale End, Smith Rowe, Nelson, and Ketty Osaka, these guys all came through Hale End. So there are products there, but... When you look beyond those guys, and we always talk about Hale End, where's the next one? Like, why why are our under-21s, under-23s getting smashed by QPR? Why are we not... Who's the next one in line? I, I keep saying Wanieri um, looks good, but he doesn't play. So you wonder, all this Hale End hype, where's the next player? Why are we not promoting players? Why are they not making the bench? Why, when they was on the bench, are they not getting game time? So... Is Hale End um, as powerful and productive as as we would like it to be, you know? Or are we just not giving enough opportunities to these young players? It's definitely a, a discussion. To get them to Dubai, they need some gold stake. They do need some gold stake, I believe. Skelly is meant to be decent. Well, we'll never know if these guys never kick a ball for the first team, you know? Um, but it is what it is. Um, listen, the main thing for me in that situation is Part A and Tommy Asser on the pitch getting game time. Bit of a shame Urian Timber wasn't involved. They have said he will be available after the international break, but he hasn't played in that behind closed doors game. So that kind of makes you wonder with Man City being next weekend, is he really going to be fit enough to be involved if he's not um, if he's not playing behind closed doors? So I, I wouldn't think Timber will be involved. Uh, Zhao said, hey, Curtis, I think the media is disrespecting Brazil for the game. What do you think? I mean, I haven't heard too much about it, to be honest. I think, I mean, I don't know. You've always got to respect Brazil. They've got quality. I know they've got some players missing. Neymar and Co are not playing. We still going to have Vinicius Jr. in that. So it will be, uh, it will be interesting. You know the media hype in England. You know, they act like we've won the World Cup 10 times. Don Arsenal, why didn't Vieira play again? Not sure why. I don't think he went on international duty either, so... I am surprised. Um, anyway, let's move on, people. Let's move on. Uh, players are on the way back. That's the most important thing. Uh, Joba said, big up, big C. We shouldn't force the youth. And listen, I hear you on that. We don't want to force the youth because if they're not good enough, then you know we're just putting ourselves in a position where you know we're, we're forcing players that are not ready, and that's the last thing we want to do. But also... I want to see these guys. I want to know how good they are, you know. That's why we invest all that money into it for. So, we'll see. We'll see. If we win the league and they don't play, bond them mutes anyway. <laughs> I don't care, you know. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see by the end of the season. Anyway, let's talk transfers. A couple of things to talk about today, people. And uh, obviously, I'm going to want your, your thoughts and opinions on this. Big up Laser Gaming in the chat. I will be doing the Brazil Watch Along tomorrow, 7 o'clock kickoff. I'll be live from 6.30. Tune in for that. Uh, in fact, before we get into the transfer news, let's just quickly talk about Bakayo Saka. Uh, what a week for Bakayo. First England player ever to bring out a source in Nando's. Be honest, have any of you been to Nando's this week since the source came out? Declan Rice uh, put out a video with Saka. Um eating Nando's, so uh, yeah, I don't know, I haven't been there yet, I don't really go there to be honest, um, but Saka, he brings out his own sauce, promotes it, and then says, that's me done mate, you know, like when it's a, you know, you was younger and you're like, you knew it was double maths or double science, and you thought, Monday, it's raining, it's cold, you said to your mum, oh, my belly, I've got belly ache. Are you sure, son? Yeah, it's really hurting, you know. I just need to stay. He's done one of them. He's done one of them. In fact, to be honest, I was a little bit more mischievous as a kid. A um, couple of times I, I rang the school and put an accent on and pretended um, to be my own dad. Didn't really work. Didn't have that deep voice, but uh, forged a few notes as well. And uh, But listen, don't 
Don't follow my lead. Go to school, kids. Go to college. Go to uni. Don't miss anything. But anyway, he's uh maybe maybe he ate too much of the sauce himself. Saka has pulled out of the pulled out of the England squad as a precaution, as a precaution um, for the upcoming England games. And once again, this is what I've got to say to Arsenal. Yes, yes, and yes. That's what I'm talking about. I don't care if they play in Brazil. I don't care if they play in Belgium. Get yourself home and relax. Oh, my leg's hurting a little bit. All we need now, Declan Rice. Something's got to happen in the next 24 hours because they play Brazil tomorrow. I can't lie. I don't want to see Declan Rice on the pitch. I don't want to see Declan Rice on the pitch. Sutton, say you had too much sauce. It's give you belly ache. Sack of sauce has mashed up your belly. Pause. Um, say that your, your leg's hurting. Your back. Sutton, we need Declan Rice out of that game. I don't want to see none of these brothers playing in that game. Get the Man City players on the pitch. Get the Liverpool players on the pitch. Arsenal players, unless it's an international game to get you to a major tournament, get yourself out of it. But listen, big up Saka, big up Arsenal. First time I've actually applauded this football club for dark art settings. It's about time. Yeah, if Ramsdale needs to play, play Ramsdale. He needs to be in the shop window. No disrespect to Rambo, you're, you're likely to be playing for another club next season. So a man of the match performance against Brazil or Belgium would do no harm Um you know, to, to, to his future. So, yeah, I've got no problem with that. Ramsdale, back-to-back -back 90 minutes if necessary. Declan Rice, we're counting on you, bro. Something's got to go wrong today. I don't want you playing for England, you know. Um, but, yeah, Saka's out. It's a precaution. Beautiful scenes, people. Beautiful scenes. Um, yeah, I will not associate Nando's with Tottenham anymore. Now we've got Saka Sauce in there. Um, but listen, it's uh, it's interesting that Arsenal players are finally pulling out of squads. The difference with Saliba, I mean, Don saying get Saliba out of the France squad. See, you can do that when you're established in the team. That's the reality of the situation. Uh, Floyd, now, of course, listen, I'm not praying for no injuries, man. I don't wish injury on any player. Um, but what I'm saying is, I'd, you know, some fatigue and tiredness on Man City and Liverpool players, we wouldn't mind. Um, Saliba's not in the French team, is he? He's not in the French team. Up on Meccano and Canate get picked ahead of him. So, to him, he's not going to pull out of a French squad when the Euros is in a couple of months. They're favourites to win the Euros and he's desperately trying to get in the team. I don't expect Saliba to be pulling out of that squad. He actually needs to play from their point of view and prove himself. So, listen, it's uh, it's an interesting one. And I and listen, I think he's better than definitely better than Upa Makana. And him and Kanate, I think, are both very very good players. So they'd actually be a good partnership. Saka's out of the squad. Get him back home. Happy days. No England games. Great stuff. Listen, makes the watch along a little bit more boring from an Arsenal point of view, but I'm calm. Saka's at home. Wrap him up in cotton wool. Looking at it now, Ben White, Tommy Asu, Gabriel Magalhães, Thomas Partey, um, Saka, Martinelli, Gabriel Jesus, um, Fabio Vieira. All these guys are at the training ground. You know, two-thirds of our team is not on international duty, so... Happy days, happy days. Arsenal managing the international breaks right, which is good. HR said, thoughts on the new Champions League format? Is it easier to win? We need quality backup defenders for Saliba and Gabby. One injury and our season is done. So, in my opinion, the Champions League will be harder to win next season. Because they're going to make it now where you get at least two teams who are in um, pot one effectively in your group. So you might look at our group this year. It was light work, right? It was light work. There's nothing there that's really going to worry you. Next year, you will have at least two teams from like pot one in your group. So you're likely to have maybe a Real Madrid, a Barcelona, a Bayern Munich, a PSG. You could potentially have two of them in your group. Also, I keep saying, once Mbappe puts pen to paper at Real Madrid, Real Madrid being linked with Alfonso Davis, Real Madrid being linked with Trent today, if you've seen Fabrizio's tweets, can you imagine if Real Madrid got Trent, Alfonso, Davis and Mbappe and you've got them robots up in Manchester, Man City? 
the Champions League's a write-off for, for a number of years. So you need to win the Champions League this year if you're Arsenal. Trust me. Um, yeah, Madrid being heavily linked. Two tier one teams is totally, oh, it's serious, man. It's And you've got to play more games. Eight teams in the group, so your squad's going to get stretched even more. Win the Champions League this year, or it could be a while. And Mbappe's reaction about Arsenal questions, he ended the dream. He laughed at us and then cushioned it by saying it was too cold. But I'm like, bro, I've been Paris. Paris is no warmer than London. So Mbappe don't rate us. That's the reality. Uh, Halicion said, uh, big C, enough respect. Thank you for all the great content. You've really helped me through some tough times. I know you're affecting the lives of many in a positive way. Shout out to your brother, Warren. Big up, bro. Appreciate the comment. Hope you're well. Hope live's treating you well. Hope all the community are well. Hope the streams help you in some way. And uh, listen, I, I am looking forward to Arsenal being back next week. We're going to really build up that game against City. It's the biggest game of the season. We'll be tier one next season. We should be. Firmal said, I never rated Mbappe anyway. Nah, you're just a B-Tech Ninja Turtle, mate. I preferred Power Rangers anyway. Um, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the shameless angle. We got to look at it now. We know he's going to go to Madrid. Anyway, right. Let's get into the transfer stuff now. Um, and let's talk. Well, let's talk about Alexander Isak. Big story doing the rounds today. Trending on social media. And a number of factors surrounding this story and i want to know your thoughts and opinions regarding alexander isak now i'll be honest when we first went in for him initially when he was at sociedad i wasn't convinced i'd seen him play a few times and always thought he looked good but the goal record for me was not good enough it didn't excite me and you shouldn't get too caught up in stats but ultimately you're signing a goal scorer you do want to see stats his highest goal tally was 17 at Sociedad. Before that, it was nine. Um, been at Newcastle for two years. Last season, 22 games, 10 goals. Missed 16 games through injury. That is a concern. This season, 20 games, 12 goals. Um, he's missed eight games through injury. But he is a very talented player, and I do think he suits our style of football. Uh, by the way, just for those in the comments, I didn't prefer Power Rangers to Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles was elite, mate. I had plastic nunchucks and everything. I was swinging them all. It was wild. But anyway, uh, Alexander Isak. So the story going around today, uh, basically it says, Mikel Arteta is a big fan of Newcastle striker Alexander Isak. He has followed him since his time in La Liga with Real Sociedad. Arsenal were considering making a move for him then, but decided against it and have kept close attention to him since his move to Newcastle. Despite Isak's contract running until 2028, Newcastle may be forced to sell one of their top stars this summer to balance the books with profit and sustainability. Real Madrid have been linked with Bruno Guimaraes and Arsenal are now being linked with a move for Alexander Isak, who could be available for around £80 million. Right, there's the story. I'm going to put the poll in the chat. As I said, 16 games missed last season through injury. Eight games left. Eight games missed this season. So he's missed 24 league games in two seasons, which is a major concern. Now, as I said, some people were on to me in the chat earlier because I said I thought Tommy Asu's contract was good business, despite the fact he's been injury prone because I would use him purely as a squad player. And I think the less he plays, the less you rely on him, the less he will get injured. To go and spend £80 million on Isak, knowing he's missed 24 games already, we've still got 10 games to go. He could miss more. That, for me, is a huge risk. That, for me, is a huge risk. And let me tell you something. I like the player. I like it. I think he's a good player. He's better than I thought. He's got goals in him. He's got a good style of football. He probably suits Arsenal more than Newcastle. However, like I said, the Tomiyasu circumstances are different. And Fitz is on to me. He's injury prone. Big C will love it. The circumstances are different. I'm going to be totally honest. I wouldn't I wouldn't sign him. I wouldn't sign him. And I like the player. If he wasn't injury prone, I'd be saying go for him. I think he's a very talented footballer. But for me, to spend £80 million on a player that 
and this is what I'm saying about the circumstances. You're not signing him to have him on the bench and use him every other week. The striker that we signed this summer needs to come in and be an upgrade on Jesus, start more games, score more goals, take us to where we need to get to. I like the player. I think he would suit Arsenal. I wouldn't pay £80 million for a player with that injury record since coming to the Premier League. Um... So, but listen, I want to know your thoughts and opinions. Watermelon said, Isak is outstanding. You can't have two strikers with a bad injury record unless you keep Eddie. And Beareth, nah, listen, Eddie, mate, yeah, unless he wants to be uh, the dinosaur, Gunnosaurus on match day, uh, we don't want him. Mr. Cool Bus Driver said, get him, Fitz. Listen, Cool Bus Driver, relax yourself, my brother. And Fitz, you calm down as well. Go easy. I'll see you both in the member stream starting next week. We'll discuss it further. Um... James, he said, you can't be rel relying on a player like him in a title race. You get reliant on them and lose them for the running. Exactly. Put Eddie in a car to Tyneside, said LSU. <laughs> I'm not sure they'd want him, to be fair. If he's going up there, I don't think they'd want him, to be honest. Uh, AMSN said, I would love his sack. Injury record is the only concern, but go for him. He's willing to risk it. Um... El Ray said, uh, way too injury prone. I'd rather Tony. He will be fit all season. Uh, Jay Black said he's a great striker, but that injury record worries me. Big up, Elliot. We'll do member stream probably Tuesday will be the aim. I'll let you know for sure, but I'm going to aim for Tuesday. We'll get a member stream done. Uh, Joseph said, grab Bruno Guimaraes and Isak on some creatine. I mean, Isak, I think they, 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 the story says they'll probably be forced to sell one of them, not both. Um, but if Real Madrid go for Bruno... Could be struggling. Big C, you've seen the United fan base raging at the United doctor, our ex-doctor who's been rushing back players and getting them injured. Hey, hey, salute to you, fella. Salute to you. Uh, they reckon Casemiro was rushed back. Now he's out for weeks, apparently. Uh, Roy said, big up from Trini, Big C. No to Isak for 80 million. Put 20 more on and go for Jokerez. He's a workhorse. And listen, he wouldn't even cost that much. He's got 85 million release clause. It's not worth the risk, says Danny Boy. Listen, for me... The poll is there. I want to know what you guys say. Um, Agent Driscoll, the doctor. I wouldn't go for a sack. Um, I think the risk is too high. I think the risk is too high. You know, Newcastle, no disrespect. Newcastle don't get to the last stages of cup competitions and stuff like that a lot of the time. So I think the demand would be even higher if he come to Arsenal because... You're going to need him to play over 50 games in all competitions. If you're getting injured playing for Newcastle and you've struggled in two years at the Prem, I, I just I wouldn't take the risk. I can see how this story would end already. I wouldn't do it. We can't. We're not Man City. We can't take an £80 million risk. Listen, you could spend £80 million on him. He comes to Arsenal, he misses two or three games and it's perfect and he scores 25 goals. And we're going, wow, what a player. Because I think he fits our play style really well. And I think he would score goals for Arsenal. I really do like the player. But I, I just, I know what Arsenal's look is like. My question would be, why spend 80 on Isak with a bad injury record when you can get Tony for 60 or 70 with a brilliant injury record, just keep him away from all bookmakers and betting apps? Right, you've got Victor Osserman who's done it in the Champions League and won Serie A for an extra twenty million. You've got Jokerez who's on fire and has a brilliant injury record. So I'm not saying all those strikers are better than Isak, but I think the risk is a lot lower. But it is sad because I'll be honest, I think he would cook at Arsenal. I really do. I think he would cook at Arsenal. But I just I can't risk it. We spend 80 million on him. The guy's injured all the time. We end up with Jesus, then Jesus getting injured. And then, you know, so I don't know. I don't know about that. Listen, there's a poll there. Let me know. I'm looking through your comments. Um, yeah, I just I just think he's injured too much. And it's been in the last two years. And like I said, it's not a Tommy Asu situation. I need this guy to play 30 games plus a season. He hasn't touched 30 games since he's been at Newcastle. 71% of you saying no. Oh, we finished on 70. 70% 70 say no to Isak. And from the comments, and I would imagine 
your thought process is similar to mine. I can see a lot of the comments. I don't think many of us are looking at Isak and going, oh, I don't rate him. I think we're looking at him going, we need him to play. And he gets injured a lot. And uh, it's a big risk. Um, so anyway, my, my second question, though, when it comes to Isak, who I do think is a fantastic player. And listen, if we signed him, you know, Maybe it would be worth the risk. Maybe we've got a better medical department. Maybe we can make it work. Um, and that's a good point. Van Persie was injured for a lot of the time and then seemed to hit uh, a point in his career where, you know, he had two great years at Arsenal. He went to Man United and had a couple of great years with no real injury concerns. So it is interesting. It is interesting how he sort of made it work from there. But the question that we will be asking is, is Isak the Swedish striker that we should be signing? Should it be his international teammate? Now, by the way, they played up front together last night. The interesting thing was, Jokerez was up front. Isak was sort of playing as the second striker just behind in Roman. That's another good thing that Isak is good at, by the way. He can move around. He has played out wide at times. But Jokerez, now they were beaten 5-2 by Portugal. They got battered by Portugal 5-2. But the boy Jokerez, again, was on the score sheet. Um, he keeps scoring. He keeps scoring. Isak didn't score in the game. Jokerez did score. Listen, it was a tap-in at the back post, but it is what it is. Great movement. It is what it is, people. By the way, Portugal, don't sleep on Portugal for the Euros, by the way. Their team is serious. They're serious. Bernardo Silva and Liao, um, João Paulinho, Bruno Fernandes, you know, they've got Nuno Mendes at left back, Diaz. They've got a serious team. They battered Sweden. But Jokerez scored last night. He keeps scoring. He keeps scoring. I can't ignore him. I'll be honest with you. I don't usually get caught up in players like this. One season wonders. We've seen them. I remember, remember Papi Cissé at Newcastle. Him and Denver Bar. Everything they hit that season went in. A year later, Cissé couldn't hit a barn door. And, you know, nobody rated him after that. But I, I can't, there's something about this Jokerez that makes me just think this guy's going to come to the Prem and bag goals. I don't know what it is. Like, people let me know the eye test. I'm not just on about last night's game. He's a bit of a menace. He's a bit of a menace, man. He's got goal. That, yeah, me too as well, man. And remember C say the one at um, Swansea that was doing the Lions celebration. I don't know, man. This guy, Jokerez, man. He looks lethal. He looks lethal, man, like 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 Glover and Gibson. Lethal weapon setting. Sorry, people. Some of you won't have watched it. But 22 goals, 10 assists this season in the league. Five goals, two assists in the Europa League now. And three goals in two games in their cup. Europa League is not an elite competition. We know that. But seven goal contributions in nine games. He's doing the business. In the league... 22 goals, 10 assists, 32 goal contributions in 24 games. I mean, listen, man. I, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. He's missed one game this season. Lethal Arsenal weapon, man. I'm telling you, six foot two, pace, strength, fantastic injury record. And there's a release clause, no negotiation. Now, the element of risk around this is... He scored 21 goals, 12 assists in the championship. You can look at that as a positive or a negative. Number one, you will say, um, you know, the championship is a second-rate league, so we shouldn't hype a player from the championship. But the flip side of that is I think the championship is one of the most physical and difficult leagues you can play in. This guy went there, handled it, was hardly injured, played 49 games out of 51. He only missed two games. One of them games he missed was through suspension. He missed one game for injury last season. And he's only missed one game this season for injury. The guy scored goals, dealt with the physicality. He's gone to Sporting, ripped the league apart. He's gone in Europa League, bagging goals for fun. Now he's playing for Sweden. Four goals in nine games. He's ticking a lot of boxes. Now the problem you've got, the striker market is limited. We know that. 
we're mentioning the same names every week. Isak, Jokarez, Osamen, Ivan Tony. I don't think Vlajevic will leave, although he did have a fallout with with Allegri, whether that changes his mind or not. Um Ollie Watkins, I think you would struggle to get unless you paid 100 million for him. Villa have got money. They're in the Champions League. Watkins signed a four-year deal. So, it's is he a one-hit wonder in a league that ain't as good? Or is he a, a player that's about to explode and become a top striker? Uh, AMSN said, I prefer Sesco. Looks like a giant. He's six foot five, but Sesco, to me, I'm not as convinced with him. i got to be honest. Saka's injury is precautionary. Nothing to worry about. He'll be playing against City. So, I don't know. I don't know. Obviously, there is risk attached to it. Spend 85 million. He could come here and be, you know, he was doing it in, a, in, a, in an easier league. Is he good enough to do it in the Prem? Masterson said Sporting are trying to force him to sign an extension that could boost the release clause to 120 million if he signs this. By the way, his girlfriend is a Portuguese actress. Um, Watkins for 100 million over Isak for 80, but Watkins is uh, 28 years of age. Done it in the champ, done it in Portugal, done it in Europe, worth the risk, but those numbers will not translate in the Prem. Slightly over hype, but good play. And I hear you on that. Let's be real. Darwin Nunes was ripping that league apart as well. Darwin Nunes was a beast over there. And I actually think Darwin Nunes, even now, is a very talented footballer. I do. I think there's, there's real quality there. But, you know, it hasn't clicked for him, has it, yet in the Premier League. Not to the level that Liverpool would have hoped. I mean, I'm looking at his numbers. Darwin at Benfica, his last season, 26 goals, 4 assists. You know, Jokeres will probably score more than that, but he was banging in numbers. You know, at Liverpool, his best Premier League season so far is 10, which is this season, which is nothing to write home about. So, you know, it is interesting. There is there is, um, there is, is risk attached to it. I've always said that Arteta needs to go for the one that he thinks is right. Whether that's Jokeres, release clause, pay it. If it's Osamen, release clause, pay it. If it's Tony, you can get him. Um, quite easily this summer. Um, and then some of the other ones, Sesco has a release clause as well, but I'm not convinced by him. So whoever we go for, there's no excuse for Arsenal. And like you said, they're trying to get him to sign a new deal with a bigger release clause. So we're going, mm, should we pay 85 million for him? By next summer, he could be worth 100 million plus. And then you might be sitting there going, damn, should we have paid 85 million for Jokeres? Um, I'm going to get another poll up. I want to know how highly you guys rate Jokeres. Would you pay the 85 million release clause for Jokeres? Are you convinced? Have you seen enough? Is the eye test showing you that's the player? Would you pay 85 million for Jokeres? I'm going to do a video, a pre-recorded video um, on Sunday. So you guys look out for that. And I'm going to go into more detail which striker should Arsenal buy this summer? Because you know what? This decision is not a decision that we can get wrong. We can't afford to get this wrong. We've got to get this bang on. It's crazy when you look at football. Manchester City have got Haaland and Julian Alvarez. Alvarez is the starting striker for Argentina. World Cup winner. Haaland's arguably the best goal scorer in the world. If you're talking about pure goal scorer. They paid £85 million for both of those players. That kind of value is unbelievable. Um, but that value isn't there right now. Jokeres, £85 million. Looks exciting, but is a risk. Osemen, £110 million. Got a proven pedigree in Italy, but there's a risk. Tony, some people saying 28 not quick enough. There's a risk attached to it as well. Every player has a risk and reward. It's about which one is the best one. So the poll is there. Let me know what you guys think. Jokeres might outscore Haaland. I wish he would come to Arsenal and outscore him. He's a two-season wonder. Well, there you go. He did it in the championship as well. Anyway, let's move on. The poll is there. Would you pay 85 million for Jokeres? The release clause is available this summer. Um, another player that Arsenal are being linked with, quite an interesting one, this um, sort of come out of nowhere, but I want to know your thoughts on this. It's Sammy Mockbell, who's wrote this, by the way. Um, what I would say, by the way, just finally on that Jokeres thing, could we throw a player to sport in Lisbon 
that would maybe pull that value down a little bit would be my first thought process. I mean, I'm I'm not sure if Fabio Vieira would go there having played for Porto, but I'm thinking, is there a player at Arsenal we could kind of chuck there and bring the value down a little bit? Would they take Eddie? Uh, Connie said, watching on the school run, this show can't be missed. Big up Curtis and the C Unit community. Big up to Connie Rose. Give them Eddie. Listen, they could have Eddie. I'm not sure they would want him, though. But Eddie might have some value over there. He's an England international. Um, not that he'll probably ever get picked for England again. Um, Arsenal are among Premier League sides monitoring centre-back Murillo. With Nottingham Forest facing a battle to keep hold of the player following their breaches of the Premier League's profit and sustainability rule. Now, I've I've heard quite a lot and watched quite a lot of this guy. Obviously, I'm a Nottingham boy and um, I keep an eye on Forest a lot. And when they signed this guy in the summer, there was a lot of hype around him coming out of Brazil. They're saying that this is going to be the next beast of a centre-back out of Brazilian football, but clubs were not willing to take a risk on him yet. He's quite rash in terms of very aggressive in the tackle. Played for Corinthians. Forrest have signed him, and um, they may lose him this summer, whether they stay up or not. Um, Atletico Madrid are being linked with him. I'm not sure whether I would go for him. I, I tell you why. I do think he's a good player, and I do think he could have a good future. Um, Edu obviously will know him from Brazilian football, and Arsenal are clearly looking for another defender as cover this summer. But for me, I like Diamande at Sporting Lisbon. By the way, we should go to Sporting Lisbon with a big bag of money. Just take Diamande and take Jokeres off and both of them. Um... Forrest apparently wanted around 50 million for him, but with this sustainability and profit, profit and sustainability issue, he may be a little bit cheaper. Um, listen, I've seen him a few times. He's got ability. He's uh, he's aggressive. He's strong. He's not amazing in the air. I could imagine him at Atletico with Simeone. I think he'll turn him into that dirty, horrible centre back. Um, I do listen. Murillo is good. He is good. Uh, he's in the Premier League. He's only 21 years of age. I'm sure he's looking for a big move. And um, Arsenal are being linked with him. And some other clubs, apparently Chelsea, looking at him as well. Um, I just wonder, you know, if he's going to cost you 30, 40 million. He's left-footed as well. So, you know, would be great cover there for Gabriel Magalhães. Uh, he is great in the air, said Lay. He's great in the air. He wins a ton of headers. Murillo is nice, but Diamande is better. I think Diamande would be better for the amount of money he would cost. I think Murillo would cost 40 million. They want 50. You're probably getting for 40. Um, so I'm not I'm not sure whether he's worth it. Simicam from Leipzig says Bellman. Uh, average Edu uh, only pushing for his compatriots. Diamande is better. The problem you may have with some of them is. Diamande might be saying, I want first-team football guaranteed. You've got Gabriel and Saliba. Who do I play ahead of? Where somebody like Murillo may be willing to come to Arsenal and have to fight a little bit more and understand he could be on the bench a little bit more. So, you know, sometimes when you're doing well, it's difficult to sign a top player if you can't guarantee them a place in the team. Diamande, is he better than Gabriel or Saliba? You know, where Murillo may be willing to take that role. Yeah, I tell you what, that Leon Bailey interview that he did, he sounds very open to moving. And I can't lie, I'd take Leon Bailey at Arsenal. I think he'd be very good competition for Saka on the right. Eight goals, eight assists this year. So, yeah, I'd take I'd take my uh, fellow yardman to Arsenal still. I think he'd take that move as well. Saliba and Diamande, we get a lot of games, but he will rotate. Social said, listen, if Havertz is scoring goals, you're telling me Jokeres wouldn't score. But exactly. It's a good point. Havertz at the moment looks decent up front. Yoker is a gunman striker, so I hear you on that. I hear you on that. And let's be honest, we paid 65 million for for Havertz. 85 million in the modern game is probably not even that much. So yeah, I hear you on that. Um, yeah, interesting story. Diamande will give us more options. Arteta will play Diamande left back. Pep did it with Vardio. When was the last Yardi at Arsenal? I'm not sure we've ever had a Jamaican international at Arsenal, to be honest. Sign Bramfway. I don't know about Bramfway. He looks all right. You know, he's in the England squad, which means his price will go up a lot. Um, 
Brahim Diaz, yeah, he's been linked with a move in Arteta's in Spain at the moment, in Madrid. Is he looking at Diaz? Is he talking to Real Madrid about him? Vardiol is crap. I, I don't think he's crap. I think Vardiol is a good centre-back. I think he's an average left-back. And I think playing left-back in the Prem is difficult. Um, but he ain't getting in at centre-back because of Stones and Diaz. So I think you won't see the best of Vardiol till he's at centre-back. Temi said Haaland ruined Bramfrey. Bramfrey tried to go shoulder to shoulder, got bodied to the floor, didn't he? Well, right here in Kevin Campbell, I'm talking about actual um, Jamaican internationals. I know them man are obviously Jamaican background, you know. So, you know, respectfully, big up right here in Kev. Get well soon, Kev. He's on the mend as well. Um, who had a better legacy, Wenger at Arsenal or Klopp at Liverpool? Great question. I think Wenger did more for Arsenal. Um, we won multiple league titles, doubles, invincibles, Thierry Henry took us into a new stadium. So I think Wenger's legacy is bigger. But the problem is Wenger then tarnished the legacy by what happened in the last four or five years. There's no doubt about it. So Klopp is leaving Liverpool a hero. Wenger was pushed out of the door at Arsenal. So, you know, the feeling around Klopp will be different. But I think overall Wenger's legacy was bigger. I think he changed the direction of football in this country. He changed the direction of Arsenal. He brought Thierry. So I'm still going to give Wenger the bigger legacy. But the feeling around both of them leaving is very different. Arsenal fans were celebrating Wenger leaving. Liverpool fans are probably going to be crying when Klopp leaves Liverpool. So he's left in the right way. Jurassic said, can't imagine going for Isak uh, over Osimhen or um, Jokerez. Uh, Carl said for 80 million go to Feyenoord get Jimenez and Timber both guys are 22 high ceilings we need to sign more younger players I'm just not sure whether how good is that Jimenez he looks good but I think we can get a better striker I could be wrong Javino get your ass to the Emirates after the buying game I got my ticket for the game have a nice weekend everyone um you're lucky to get your ticket for that game, by the way. Young Gunner said, for centre-backs, give me Auburn or Tapsoba. Both aggressive. Spoke to a Barca fan at the gym. He said, De Jong and Araujo could be sold. Wow, I'd take both. I'd take both of them, by the way. Both quality. Um, if Kai plays up front for the remaining games, performs well, I don't see Arteta buying a centre-forward. That would be the worst mistake he could make. If Manafro and Jovino uh, dubs, by the way, a super harsh. Could be worth a, ti uh, a time. Uh. <laughs> Get Ollie Watkins, says HR. Yeah, 100 million. 100 million, bro. You ain't getting him any cheaper. Villa will not give him away. Lewis said Amari Hutchinson is a yard man. He is in the Jamaica squad. We sold him to Chelsea, right? I would love De Jong. I would love De Jong from Barca. Uh, BBFM, I want Xerxes. Strong, fast, great link-up play. Mm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether he's the guy. Um, what we got? Final couple of stories. And then we'll be out of here, people. Let me end that poll. Let's end that poll. Um, about Jokerez. Would you pay 85 million for Jokerez? 66% of you say yes. And 34% of you say no. Clearly excited by what you've seen. You know, he's... It just to be that tall and quick and aggressive and scoring goals, it's just so interesting, isn't it? And you don't see it often. Um, and the fact there's a release clause, which means no negotiation, just pay and leave. Um, you know, which which makes it a little bit more interesting and easy i would say for arsenal to get the deal done you know and, and what i want to see with arsenal this season is get a big deal done early you know don't don't let the summer drag on you got to remember it's the euros this summer um and you know some players their value will go higher you know depending on who they are you know these tournaments clubs will wait let them go there do well pump the price up even more so you know get your business done and um, and move on from there. That's what I would say. I thought I had another story. That was actually the last story. HR said, get Ollie Watkins. Yeah, people, there we go. All right, a news for the day. Let me get to a few of your comments. Guy looks sensational. So does Arda Gula. Did you see his halfway line crossbar shot? No, I didn't see that. 
Chris said Edu loves a release clause. Easy work for him, innit? Turn up with a bag of money and leave. Um, Arteta will sign uh, Douglas Louise. Possibly. Aston Villa could be in financial problems as well. Um, I do like Douglas Louise, but I think there's better options. Uh, Gary said we should try and convince Rodrigo to come on board with Mbappe's arrival. Problem is, I don't think Mbappe necessarily means Rodrigo gets on the bench. Their front three could be Vinicius, Mbappe and Rodrigo. And then second of all, how do you convince Rodrigo to leave Real Madrid and come to Arsenal? And then where do you play him? Where do you play him, you know? Um, I don't know. Mr. Cool Bus Driver, I rate Curtis highly. You read everyone's messages regardless of Super Chat or not. Not like some other guys you cut. Hey, listen, man. We've all got our own way of doing it. It's, it's not easy, I'll be honest. You know, I've always tried to make this channel that it's not super chat related. Obviously, if you put in a super chat, it's guaranteed to be read. But time is money as far as I'm concerned. If you guys have took the time out to watch and write a comment, I will try and read as many as possible without affecting the dynamics of the show. So big up. Um, but we do obviously appreciate the super chats. It helps support the channel. Um, listen, it's all opinions. I think the interesting thing is, and I've said this, is that there's no clear and obvious striker that we should go for. I remember when Alexis went and we signed a Bamiang. I was so excited that we were signing him. I was very disappointed because I was always thinking, imagine adding a Bamiang to Alexis Sanchez. Why do we have to lose a top player to sign a top player? But I don't think there's an obvious answer this summer. I think every striker we talk about, we go, well, he's good at that, but he's not so convincing when it comes to that. Is Osimhen the answer? He's got great pedigrees, won Serie A. He's banged in goals in the Champions League. Of course, we should be excited if that signing's going. He's not the most eye-test convincing of players. But maybe he just comes to Arsenal and bangs goals in left, right and centre. You know, Haaland isn't the most exciting of players, but the guy never stopped scoring. If Osimhen came here and scored 25 goals, who cares how good he, he looks all round? You've got Ivan Toney. You know, I'm I'm still a fan of Ivan Toney because he scored 20 plus goals in a relegation threatened team. Some people are saying not quick enough, 28 years of age, got a bit of an ego, disrespectful to Brentford in interviews. I personally think Tony would bang goals in for Arsenal. I do. Um, 28 doesn't bother me. I don't think his game is built around speed, so I still think you'd get three or four years out of him. But can he come to a big club and do it? Can he do it in Europe? We've never seen those things. Jokeres, to me, is very exciting. I can't lie. But I'm not going to pretend I've watched Sport in Lisbon 15 times for 90 minutes. I haven't. I've watched a couple of live games since we've been linked with him. I've watched a lot of his highlights. Um, and then you've got Sesco, you know, 40-odd million release clause. He's going to be cheaper. Um, but I'm not fully convinced by Sesco, I can't lie. And then obviously, you know, Watkins would cost a lot of money. And uh, Vlajevic is a good player, but there's talk of a new contract. We had an argument with Allegri the other week, so, you know, are things going to change a little bit there? I wonder if Cruz will pull a sickie to, uh, because of double maths and sights. Well, luckily he's at school, so... He can't hear my uh, skiving conversation I had earlier. Leahy said the recruiting team are going to earn their money with whoever they get in a striker. At this point, whoever they bring in, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. The reason they're going to be under pressure is that whoever they bring, if it doesn't work, people will say you should have signed him. If you sign Ivan Tony, they'll say you should have signed Osserman. If you sign Jokeres, they'll say you should have signed Sesco. You know, whoever they go, it needs to be a hit. And the good thing that somebody said earlier in the comment, which I thought was a great point. Kai Havertz is having a good run of form at the moment. He hasn't tore up any trees. But he's up front playing well. And he looks like he's got goals in him. Every time he plays up front, gets a good chance. He looks like he can score. And he's not an out-and-out -out striker. If I was Jokeres... If I was Ivan Tony, if I was Victor Osserman, I'm looking at that Arsenal team and I'm going, you put me in that front line, I'm scoring 20 goals. You've got Odegaard in the pocket, magnificent creator. You've got Saka out wide, who for a winger, 
does create a lot of chances. You've got Martinelli, who, okay, maybe not as good this season, but last season was very good. You've got Declan Rice getting forward. You've got, you know, Ben White puts crosses in. I think if you're a good striker, you go into that Arsenal team. Yeah, listen, you will be under a lot of pressure because the expectation of the fans and the club. But you should be scoring goals. You should be banging goals in this team. We're one of the best attacking teams in the league. We're one of the most creative teams in the league this season. So to me, I don't think you've even got to be that good a striker to come into this Arsenal team and thrive. And I think that's credit to the Arsenal team. I mean, listen, we're the top goal scorers in the Premier League. We scored 70 goals this year without an out-and-out -out goal scorer. Manchester City have got Haaland, they've got 63 goals. Liverpool have got Mo Salah and they've got 65 goals. Villa have got 60 goals with Ollie Watkins. So if I'm Jokerez, I'm saying, put me in that team, I'm going to clean up. I will score... You, you you score 10, 15 tappings alone. Then you might score a few worldies, a few penalties. So it will be interesting. It will be interesting. One thing I will say, I think Arteta will look for the striker that does more than scores goals. I think he likes a striker that can link up play, can drop in if necessary, can run in behind. I don't think he loves just the out-and-out -out poacher. So it will be interesting, but the options are there, and uh, let's hope we get the right one. Uh, people, thank you very much for tuning in today. Really appreciate your support, as always. I'll be back tomorrow, 6.30. Uh, big up my bro, Akeem. He said, get Jokerez. I need pace and chaos. I love Ivan Tony, but he's a bit slow, he says. Um, I'll be back tomorrow, 6.30 p.m., England against Brazil. Watch along. Um, Sunday, I've got a pre-recorded video coming out. I'm going to go into more detail about which striker I think we should go for. Look into a bit more detail how they play, the goals they've scored, their age, their contracts, all of that stuff. So look out for that. Monday, I'll be back with the live streams in terms of Arsenal content. So big up. Hope to see you all in the watch along tomorrow. England against Brazil. Laid back settings. Enjoy your Friday. Member stream will be probably on Tuesday. And then we'll build up to Manchester City. Biggest game of the season next Sunday. Take care. Enjoy your Friday. And I'll see you all tomorrow, people. Bless. Oh, 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 oh,